Okay, so basically what we've done so far is found two different sets of basis vectors that we can use to describe our system of two spin 1f particles. The first basis was just, we labeled by the individual z component of the angular momenta of each system. And then the second basis vector, our set of basis vectors, we labeled by the total angular momentum of the system and total z component of the angular momentum of the system. And since these are just two different sets of basis vectors, they're related to each other. That is, I can write any of these basis vectors as some linear combination of these basis vectors. And in particular, for this system of uh, two spin 1 half particles, we found these relations. So for example, we had a state of uh, total angular momentum 1 and z component of angular momentum 0 that acted that uh, could be written as a linear combination of these two states. And what we can do is generalize all this to combining uh, systems of arbitrary spin. And that's all, you know, how to do that has already all been worked out and is um, written down in what are called Klebsch-Gordon tables. Uh, but we'll get to that soon enough. So let's just ask, if we had a system of two spin one particles, how would we describe that system? Well, we could just do what we did, uh, like for this system of spin uh, one half particles, or two spin one half particles. We'll just form uh, these nine basis vectors, where the uh, they're labeled by just the individual z component of each system. So, a spin one system can have z component of one, zero, or minus one, and so since we have two of them. Each one can take on three values, so there are th uh, three times three basis vectors, just like there were two times two basis vectors for this system. So now we have nine basis vectors. And just to be clear, when I write, you know, for this system of two spin one half particles, this state, remember, this one minus one means the total angular momentum is one, and the z component, the total z component is minus one. But when I, when I write here, this is the individual spin, the individual z components of each particle for my uh, two spin one half particles. So uh, this is means the first particle has z component of spin minus one, and the second particle has uh, z component one. And just like I can form another basis of total angular momentum and total z component of angular momentum. I can do another thing here. There should be another basis that is some linear combination where all the basis vectors are some linear combination of these basis vectors that correspond to states of total angular momentum and total z component of angular momentum. And how to form those basis vectors is described in what are called clutch gordon tables. So this is the clutch gordon table for uh, a combining systems of two spin, or combining two spin one systems, hence the one times one. And this just tells you how to form, well, first of all, what the other basis vectors are, what their the total spin and total z component of the spin are, and what linear combination, uh, and how to write them as some linear combination of these vectors. So for example, uh, when I look at this table, you can just look at each, you know, uh, bolded kind of section individually. So first we'll just look at this one. And what this is telling me is that there will be a state with total angular momentum 2 and z component 2 that can be written as a linear combination of a square root of 1 ta uh, times my 1 1 state. So it's kind of just a trivial case, you know, uh, it's just saying that just like up here, you know, a system of, of two spin one half particles, both spin up, behaves like a system with total angular momentum one and total spin one. So similarly here, this is just saying that a system of two spin one particles, both be with spin one, behaves like a system of total spin two and total z component two. 
So the next box, it gets a little more inter interesting. This tells me that I'll have a state corresponding to total angular momentum two and z component one. That is the linear combination of square root of one half of the one zero state plus square root of one half plus the, uh, times the zero uh, one state. So this basically. So uh, there's an implied square root in each of these coefficients that they just don't write because otherwise it would get very crowded. Um, so yeah, this I just read here. This tells me I have two one, that is one over square root of two times my one zero plus one over square root of two, uh, zero one. And then for example, I can do, I'll have another state that's one one that is also a linear combination of these two states, but I'll also have a two zero state and that will be one over square root of six times one minus one uh, and two thirds. Oh no, this should be minus. Ooh. Okay, mess that up. Whatever. So one over square root of six, one minus one plus so square root of two over three. As oh, did I? Oh yeah, I messed. I messed this up. Okay, my bad. Yeah, this should be zero zero. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so my two zero state should be one over square root of six, one minus one, plus square root of two over three, zero, zero, plus one over square root of six, minus one, one. So, uh, oh, and I just rewrote that before, that, that. So, uh, yeah, so basically this is just, tells us these tables, they, you can form an obvious basis that is just the kind of Kronecker products of the individual uh, basis vectors you use to describe each system. And then there will be another basis of total angular momentum and total z component of angular momentum that can be written, where each of those basis vectors can be written as some linear combination of these vectors. And the Klebsch-Gordon tables just tell you how to do that.